Born Matan team. Welcome back to the channel. It's been ages and ages since we have done a little video. Um, I'm going to do a live match today. A couple of reasons. First reason, um, I've not done one in summer, I don't think. All the matches we did over winter and spring, live matches. Um, and second of all, I wanted to do something different. It's always been on a commercial previously when we've done a live match. So I want to take you up to my uh, my syndicate, my club water for the latest summer round. Now, there's not many of us on it today. Uh, it's summer holidays, people are away. We normally get between sort of six and ten, so it's a small summer league anyway. I almost treat it like I'm, I'm fishing a, a section rather than a, an overall match. So five of us today, little knock up essentially, um, but I'm going to do a rover. So I thought it would be quite interesting because not everybody uh, understands how a rover works. It's, it's not a straight draw as such. Um, so I thought that would be quite good. And essentially the way a rover works is that you draw numbers, but not for the peg, but for the order you will choose your peg. So essentially you get to pick where you want to fish, but it depends what number. So obviously there's five of us today, one to five, if you draw number one, you get first pick of the whole lake, 16 pegs on the lake. If you draw number five, you get the last pick. Now there's benefits, pros and cons to both. Um, if you're last, you can actually see where all the space is. Obviously you've not got your first number of choices, but you get to see where the space is on the lake and, and um, that might work in your favor. So then let's head down there. Let's get to the Syndicate Lakes, the Heckinson Syndicate and it's on our match carp lake which is a difficult lake i spoke about this before it's not commercial we'll be looking for probably 10 to 20 pound will be a good weight today that'll be a mixture of mainly silvers small tiny little carp which we stocked last year and hopefully the odd one or two bonus fish in the form of eyed chub uh, or carp so we'll see let's get down there right come that on let's so <laughs> Why is it? You caught a carp straight away. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. Yeah, she was like, well lucky she was. Right. She always Five. beats everyone. <laughs> okay, and number one. Yeah. Bruce, number one. Hold on to it for a second, please. Yeah. Oh, like you, you go first, mate. I'll just have whatever's left. Brandon. So you've got that bit. Okay. I've got two. So. Uh, Chris, and then I'm three. Right, so choices. Uh, Bruce, over to you. Uh, oh, two, is it? Peg two. Yeah. yeah, that's that one over there. Brilliant. Chris, what are you thinking? Um, I might pick... It's not the one that's right before the corner. It's about two back, so I think it's 11, isn't it? 11, 12. On the, <coughs> so nine's right at the end, ten's the one that's in the open water, eleven's the one next to the box, twelve is the one next, bit further down the island. Twelve then. Peg twelve. Chris, me, I will go on... Shall I have that? Have I got the balls? I'm going to go on peg eight. Which one's that? On the side. On the other, the last so, peg on the other side. I have got the balls. Brandon, where do you want to go, pal? Surprised you're not picking the peg you like. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a bit close to it. Which peg's that? It's just the one straight across with the bowl. Five. Peg five. Peg five. Yeah, go on, I'll go peg five. Peg five is Brandon. Gail, you've got the whole weight to go up. I want. Now, which one is it? Between them two lily pads there. I think I might be 12, I might pick it already. So that's 15. Yes, 12 is the one he's already picked. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise that one was 12. I'll have the one right near the calf, so whatever that one is there. Uh, that would be 14. Peg 14, Gail. Right then, team, we've drawn number three in the rover numbers. Third pick out of five of us. Um, and nobody had picked down this end, this end of the lake. This is peg eight. 
and not fished it for a while but there always tends to be a few fish down this end peg eight or peg ten across there are always popular with pleasure anglers you park behind your peg and all the rest of it and when i had a quick wonder before there's a lot of fizzing now this is one of the pegs where there's still quite a bit of bit of weed left that we tried to get out and it's not grown as bad this year which is great because the water's a lot more coloured but there's one or two fish topping definitely those pads attract carp um, next person along is Brandon on peg 5 just beyond that willow tree somebody then on peg 2 Bruce at the end and then the other two Gail and Chris have, have gone on that straight down there so I've got loads of room it's, as I expected um, let's see how we go okay peg resembles a bit of a bit of a jumble sail but that's the nature of the beast on this lake you could have a bit of everything set up i've not gone too far i mean i've not got any rods set up you know could fish a waggler out in that open water or chuck a tip to the point of the island and, and if things get desperate then you know it's an option but i want to keep things really simple when i fish this lake it's, it's as i repeat again it's not a commercial we're probably looking for 10 to 20 pound for really good weight majority of that will be made up from bits and pieces with odd bonus fish but i've chose a peg that's given me a chance of those bonus fish for sure so where are we going to go um first option is two plus two just on the edge of that the light if you like you can see the, the reflection of the bushes just going to feed maggots through a cad pot with a little bit of crumb and i've got some miracle f1 supreme knots up there um, see what happens start getting a few bites and then a feed by hand when the fish start competing down to the right you've got some crap growing just there uh, I'll feed there for later on down this edge just sort of here in the corner a little uh, edge of the pads very very risky but I'm beefed up I'll show you in a second on the end of the pads facing that chair on the far bank I'm gonna fish paste so down the edge here sort of micros and corn standard down the edge baits if you like but i'm going to fish paste over there over ground bait um i fished this peg before i've had a bonus fish doing that um i've not knocked up any miracle paste i didn't have time yesterday so i'm just going to use the f1 supreme um the red color as paste now over towards those pads where that post is on the far bank that's going to be my long line so sort of 11 and a half meters i'm going to ping pellets out there six mils fish a six mil pellet over the top might even do a bit of slapping as well um not necessarily feeding much just pinging one or two pellets hoping to get a, a fish as it passes through there's no cruisers around nothing to mug um so there will be fish shallow it's only three foot deep have a look at the bait so a bit of everything as i mentioned we've got some micras um just made to put a little bit of green dye on them two pints of red and white maggots a little bit of hemp and corn some eight mils some six mils uh, some soft hookers there's some worms in there down the edge standout bait that's the needs a bit more water but that would be my paste that's uh, miracle baits f1 supreme red and that's my ground bait that's miracle baits f1 supreme the natural rig wise paste rig three foot deep guru paste fault 0.3 of a gram um little shallow rig just set sort of 12 inch deep at the minute it's just for slapping over the top six mil pellet on down the edge matrix power margin float uh, point uh, four of a gram it's in about two two and a half foot of water We've just got a spread bulk there just to sort of drag it up the shelf uh, long rig pellet a banded pellet on a 16 that's a malman uh, i can't remember what is that malman titan no i can't remember the name 4b14 uh, again spread spread shot and then short two plus two for anything that swims oh looks come off a little drennan uh, 0.3 of a gram float bulk and two droppers it's an as3 nice and light Sort of point 0.14 line, point 0.12 up length, 18 zuck, 10 to 12 all over elastic. In all the others, um, against those pads, so my paste rig and my edge rig, that's orange Drennan power pull. Um, the slapping rig point is 10 to 12 hollow. Again, that's Ian, Ian's floats, his um, power solids, 
and what is that that's Drennan power pull purple in the open water pellet rig so a bit of everything but nothing too too silly so all in will be very soon and we'll see how we go all in Okay, just kicking off then with some pellets along. First challenge today is the weather. Um, it's been sort of 26, 27 degrees every day. Yesterday it rained for the in the morning and dropped down to about 16. And then it went red hot again in the afternoon. And then it was quite cool overnight, well, 13, 14 degrees. Um, and today it's it's probably about 20 degrees. We've got a drop of rain at the minute, but it's really humid and boiling. Really, really humid. So I don't know what what impact the weather's going to have. It's quite high pressure. But a little bit of rain at the minute. That's fine. That'll soon go. So we've put some pellets out long, just a dozen or so, 11 meters. I'm just going to kick off short. Dozen or so maggots, a little bit of crumb, short on this mixed line, silver, silver, silver fish ish line, which hopefully would have enough beef to land any bonus fish. Incidentally, the pole I use, I'm, I use my margin pole when I come on here. So it's, it's a Garbellino UK6. So it's only 30 meters long, there's a bite. It's only 30 meters long. And that is a little rud. All right, silver's in one net, carp in the other. We'll just repeat that process. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, I use, a, I use my margin pole um, on here. That's nothing serious. It's a little knock up, little league that we have. I think I'm winning the league by two points, so it's quite close. Tim, the guy who's second, the club chairman, he is, uh, he's away today, so he's not fishing. Again, just a few maggots and a little bit of crumb. That's on the drop. I've just got a bulk and two droppers on this rig. And this is what we want. All we want to do is just feel our way into the into the session and uh, put some silvers in the in the net. I'm not going to feed anything this time. That's put me a uh, side hood up. Now, if I start feeding maggots by hand now, I know that um, we're going to get the fish coming up in the water. And that can get the better stamp silvers. Bit of rubbish on the rig. This is the only thing when I chose this peg, and <laughs> this is the, the interesting thing with a with a rover. Is, uh, I knew this was probably one of the weediest pegs on the lake. We had loads of problems with weed last year, and um, we've got rid of most of it now. A lot of little carp have been put in just to root up the bottom and colour the water. But this peg has still got patches of it, which swings and roundabouts. Oh, what's this? It should offer cover for the for the bonus fish. Now that's a better rod. So these are these are all little handy little fish just to just to kick off with. Again, I'm not going to feed anything. What I was debating doing, but and on, on, on any other peg I would have done, but not this one, because again, it's snaggy, and I think there's carp in this area, is a, I'd set up a little whip and uh, have a go at these, these smaller fish for an hour or so, just to get some weight in the net. That's another little rud. But I think for... Uh, 
think for this peg, we play it safe with the, uh, let's put some bait in, play it safe with the elastic and the short lining. Got, I, I think this carp in this area, um, there's bubbles coming up all over the place. And I want to give myself a chance, got no chance if I've got a whip. There's bubbles coming up now over the, over the feed that I've put in. I'm not going to break down, let's see if we can swing him. Yep, that'll do. Speed us up a bit. So, all rod. Now, how I expect this to go is it'll be rod, and then I think when we exhaust, then we'll probably get a run of perch. There's some really nice roach in here, up to a pound. Hopefully we can get one or two of them bonus fish. <laughs> That's no good. So even a even a, a, a decent roach, you know, I would class as a as a bonus on this lake. And why I wanted to do a little film today is to sort of demonstrate, you know, there's thousands of club waters like this up and down the country where they're not packed to the rafters with fish like commercials. Loads of little leagues take place just between a few mates, a few members. Bit of fun. I'm gonna have to bulk, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bulk that down in a second. Because that was these are taking them right on the drop. Um, yeah, thousands of waters like this up and down the country. And, uh, you know, they're typical, it's a typical club lake. See if we can bomb that down. There's a lot of fizzing going on there. I wonder what that, that is, because they're not rud. So if I, if I do walk a carp here, I give myself a chance. Not three pound bottom. 10 to 12 elastic. And I'm just going to move that bulk shot right on top of the up length, everything. So no droppers now, just straight on top. Let's see if I can bomb it down, see what's on the bottom. Oh, that was a carp that swirled there. Interestingly though, what, um, what you can do with these lines, two plus two, nice and simple. Start off on the maggot, you know, get plenty, I've got a double maggot on at the minute. Get plenty of these little bits and pieces in, then start introducing some micros. Then start introducing some fours or sixes. And it then becomes a little bit more selective. There's a lot of fizzing going on where I am there now. Well, that's despite having the bulk above the up length. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to stick a piece, a small piece of corn on. I will feed again. A few maggots. A little bit of F1 Supreme, no F1s in here, in this lake, only carp. So I'm going to put the bait in first, that should get to the bottom, then feed. Oh, that misses Mangle, that messed me plan up. There we go. So this is a good start, a few rud, a little bit of fizzing going on. Just try that bigger bait. So what, what we got going at the minute, we've got a dozen or so six mils fed out there on the deck. Later on, no rush for the margins, down there, down the edge, pace line. I think I actually will put some ground bait in over there in a minute. 
just to see. Once I start seeing that fizzing, I can have a quick look. Mm, even the rudder taking this this corner as it goes down. There's a lot of activity, a lot of fish feeding, which is good. But this is the thing, five and a half hour match, gonna fish till half, 10 till half three. You know what are we now? We're sort of 10 past 10. Ooh, plenty of silvers to go at. If you can get sort of five or six pound of silvers, a couple of bonus fish later on, you'll be there or thereabouts. Okay, after that little initial run of, um, of silvers there, they're still there, no problem. You know, I can flick a few maggots in by hand, just keep them happy. But on here and on these waters where you're just looking for the odd bonus, I can fish for them for three hours, you know, from 11 till sort of two o'clock. I always find that the first and the last hour, last hour and a half today, it tends to be the, the time for a bonus fish. So after 20 minutes or so, just having a quick look on this long line here where I've been feeding six, I've fed, fed some six more pellets at the start. I've just put some more in now. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna ping a couple over the top now. Plenty of bristles showing. So I can di distinguish between potential carp or just a little one playing around with it. So just like two or three pellets over the top, six mils, make a bit of noise. It's definitely carp in that open water. I know there's carp in those pads. I've put some ground bait down there now, ready for the paste. But just two or three pellets. Keep them little ones happy there. Just at 11 meters, I'm not, I'm not fishing full length. Uh, I've still got another section and, and a dolly behind me in case I need to go a bit further. Okay, final gambit then of this first hour, looking for a bonus. Pace line. I've had a quick look. Fed some more ground bait and some hemp. I love fishing paste over hemp. A few micros in there as well. So and there's, there's a bit of fizzing. So second look. So I've got that F1 Supreme red made into a bit of a putty on the hook. It's one that sort of standout bait. I don't know if you won't be able to see on that the camera I think I'm in the way but if we get one we'll know about it so there's, a few, there's a few indications straight away but again it's probably those small fish straight on it I'm confident that if there's any carp knocking about those small fish will soon bugger off and we'll get a positive classic pace bite Now, interestingly, this top kit I've got in here is a short margin top kit. Garbolino do it, specific margin kits that are just one piece. It was uh, Alex at um, Tackle and Baits that, that recommended when I was down at Rookery Waters last year. And um, I've got the orange Drennan power pull through it. Lots of fizzing going on there. And hopefully, there's a little indication. It's just come off, I think. Hopefully, if I do get a positive by an ochre fish, with there being not a long length of elastic, we'll get a bit of control. Yeah, that come off. Right, first hour is over. I probably spent a good half an hour, 40 minutes looking for for that early bonus fish. So first hour, last hour and a half is tends to be the time. 
apart from a couple of indications on that pace line no sign of carp so back on this this short line i might be tempted in a minute to get the whip out because they're right up in the water um it's not even getting to the bottom unless i put a bigger bait on Oh, rod and perch. Had a little roach as well. It's obviously going to be a lot quicker fishing to land. If I'm going to get my head down on these for a couple of hours. See, they just I can tell as soon as I flick it out. Keep a keep a tight line. They're not a bad little stamp. Double maggot. And so we want a few pound of these with a view to then looking for a bonus again later on. I'm interested to know what's underneath these, but Some big perch in here, big roach. I'm gonna try and I can try and bomb it through, but straight away. Right, I couldn't resist the urge. I don't think I'm gonna get a carp come in shallow, so I've set up a whip shallow. When they're swirling like this, I'm really having it. I fish very positively, a little three meter whip. We spoke about this on the last video, just shy of the length to allow for the bend. And that is an Ian Floats uh, pendulum. I call it a plopper. And the idea being is that it makes a nice plop on the surface, attracts the fish. And when they take the bait and they sort of bolt off, they hook themselves against the weight of the, the plopper. It's a little one gram of that. So I'll try and demonstrate it. A few maggots keep a nice tight line missed that one and there we go hooks itself against the the plopper and that's a good stamp straight to hand so that's more than two ounce so if we can get them going a few maggots nice and straight keep the line tight This up length might be a little bit too long. I think it's a 12 inch up length. I need to shorten it really. Because you do get the odd maggot nicked and you don't see the bite. That's just a single maggot at the minute. But it's a really effective way of catching these silvers shallow. I did a piece for uh, Angling Times a couple of years ago, catching Eid and small carp doing this. It's just, you know, it's a really good way of, of putting a weight together quickly. As I say, I need, to, I need to fill these middle hours when the carp don't traditionally feed with as many silvers as I can, so. No point in messing about, wondering what's on the bottom and below these fish. I might as well catch them. And it's just nice and nice and smooth fishing. You don't need loads of bait either. It's just creating competition, just half a dozen maggots. The key is keeping that line tight. Perch. So even the perch are coming up and competing with the rod. Handful of maggots, nice delicate swing, keep the line tight. Miss that one. Yeah, you want a little plop. Love the little sound. Let's say they do they do nick the bait. I might shorten that length in a minute. that 
definitely looks itself against the and that is the best one yet beautiful rod again lovely way of fishing that's a roach oh no it's a rod you don't have to keep changing your bait another another gambit i've got some worms in the tub there a worm's head can be that little bit quicker it's a bit tougher than a maggot they don't nick it off as easy see that's gone again i'll try that one then so let's rather than shortening the up length let's just go on the worm tub get a worm just pinch its head off just so we can see that little piece of worm's head nice plop keep the line tight Still on, no problems. Still on. Keep that line tight. That's a tiny little perch. Again. Nice and tight. And there you go, it hooks itself. So you can see, I mean, maybe I should have started with this instead of wasting the time looking for the carp, but if you get a carp six or seven pound, it's a lot of these little fish. It's always worth having a look. First and last hour. Ooh. Line tight. Can't stress that enough, especially if there's a bit of breeze and there's a bit of a breeze developing. You've got to keep everything straight. Now, if it does go quiet, it might be. Carp has, has moved in. I can just go on that bottom rig for five minutes. They do like maggots on here, the carp. Oh. What got, got me thinking about doing this, this with this, this is, this little pendulum is used for sort of mugging and you can even stick it on a rod and line and use it as a, like a mini pellet waggler. But many years ago, when I was a youngster, a place called Bradshaw Fishery is very famous nowadays, up in the northwest. Um, when commercial started, they put a load of small carp in. Oops. You know, sort of four or five ounce. And they used to use a pike bung to catch them. So a similar principle to this, that they hook themselves and they called it the rattler. And the reason why it was called the rattler is because the shot that you'd have on your line to hold the pike bung in place, the float would rattle against those shot as you were swinging the fish in. It was quite crude back then. You know, barbless hooks weren't always uh, mandatory. And it got me thinking about, I thought, well, if you can, if you can catch those carp like that way back when, Silvers that love fishing, feeding shallow like this, and a scaled down version, surely the same principle would work. And alas, it does. So when I come across the Inevitable Floats, I thought I'll give these a go. And it works, it works an absolute treat. That worm's head is still on, by the way. Doesn't feel as quick as a maggot. But I'm not changing the hook bait all the time. 
So that's where the uh, the plopper, as I call it, comes in. I never got a chance to use it on that whip video I did on the last one. Last video I did about whip fishing. Because it wasn't really the weather or the time of the year. They weren't feeding like this. Just you've got to keep that line tight. Now then. Good stamp again. So there we go, folks. That is, uh, that's my change. A few fish in the net early doors. Just to sort of get some in there. Scan around the different bonus lines that I'd put in. Six mil open water. Pace down there. In fact, that is fizzing like mad. In fact, I might have to have a look on that in a second. Um, and now, really, apart from me having a look down there in a second, I'll probably do this for the next couple of hours. It's just... Mate, well up, mate. What's going on, Chris? Gail's back at her old tricks of catching carp. Is she? Brilliant. Right, we are in a bit of a quandary, coming up to the halfway point, and have a good sort of hour on this whip, on the old plopper. Plenty of good ro uh, rud, odd perch, but it has slowed down now. Ooh, not as quick, still getting odd fish. Now, word on the bank. Brandon, next peg down, I'm peg eight, he's peg five. He's got a big bay in front of him. It always looks like a bit of a, a flyer. And uh, I don't blame him for picking it. He's also on the bonus peg. He's had two carp, both on the method, which in this heat, I didn't think they'd be, uh, be on to that. Claiming that they're five pound a piece. So let's say he's got double figures. Gale on the other side, peg, peg 14 I think she's on, she's had two carp as well, one about six, one about four, so again, double figures, me just silvers, Chris on the other side just silvers, Bruce down the end I believe has a couple of nice skimmers, he's down on peg two, so what do we do? I can't fish that hard pellet long anymore, the one that I had a look at in the first hour, because I've snapped my top kit. <laughs> Something fell on it. The camera tripod. <laughs> so I knocked it over as I was shipping out. And it fell onto all my top kits and snapped one of them. Disaster. So we're not having a good day, really. No bonus fish yet. Snap top kit, way behind. Only odd fish now. So what do we do? Um, I'm thinking I could try that bottom rig short here. See if anything's underneath. I've fed a few micros before. But when we do get them going like that, they're a, they're a good stamp. But again, I even, you know, you'd say that they're still half a dozen to the pound. So for ten pound, that's sixty fish. Tiny little perch, no good to anyone. Hmm. So what I've done, I've refed um, that paste line over there, some ground bait. I've started introducing some bits and pieces down to my right to the edge. Just some six mils, a few grains of corn. Down to my left in this far left hand corner, I've fed some micros and corn, a little bit of emp. So that's all, just a bit of gear ready for later on. I've got a bomb rod out of the van. Because as I say, I can't fish hard pellet with my pole anymore, but I could throw a little bomb over the top. So 
So I've been feeding a few eight mils towards those pads over there. See, these are really, really iffy now. Um, could open up a new line in open water. Corn, maybe. I'll change my rig. Just not not as confident on air shallow now. Odd fish. Hmm. What do I think I've got? I might have five pound. Four or five pound, I think. Normally I'd always say sort of six, eight pound of silvers, a couple of bonus fish. And it re again, it really is one of them sort of, you, you, oh, hello, that's better. He pays you money and takes your choice. You know, you can sit there all day on the method, you could blank. Or you can get a few out like the others are doing today. I always, I can't fish like that. I find it boring. So I always veer on the side of sort of pragmatism, if you like. You know, I want to get a few fish in the net. And rely on that first and last hour to get me bonus fish but it does concern me if they another carp or two from either of them and it's game over i have to catch carp so what do i want to do what do we want to do Still getting odd ones of these. But definitely before when they were hooking themselves against the float, now I'm sort of having to strike. And uh, there's just not as, just don't think there's as many fish there. It's really, really humid. I can see Bruce down the bottom now. Oh, big fish swirl then. And the maggot. That'd be fun if I hooked a carp on a on the whip. I can see Bruce down there playing a good fish. Down on peg two. It's elastic's right out. So that's another carp potentially being caught. Hmm. I might I might be forced to spend more time looking for carp. Oh, hello. Now that is a decent sized roach. That's a lovely roach, look at that. You wouldn't mind getting one of them every chuck, would you? These whips are brilliant, it's adrenaline, acolyte. You can, you can swing in, you know, reasonable sized fish like that. Perch. Yeah, Bruce has definitely got a lump down there. What do we do? Oh no, that's not good to anyone. Yeah. Yeah, Bruce has got a belter there. Looks like a potentially a double. Now I know that peg very well, peg two. I fished that on more matches than any other peg on here. And to his right, he's got a lovely Lovely set, of, oops, lovely set of pads, and I think that's where he's been fishing down to. It's good fun catching these. You can see when you when you do get them going, you really do get them going. But. Half 12, just coming up to the halfway point. If Bruce gets that in. He might be in trouble.
Okay, first switch, really interesting. All I've done is I've just got my deck rig on this maggot line, the short line. And instead of throwing anything out, I've started doing what I did at the beginning of the session. With like half a cad pot of maggots, topped with a bit of ground bait. Sort of bomb it down. Feed on top. And I've been getting some really nice roach. And that was on the drop, so it's probably a rud. Oh, it's a perch. But there seems to be some nice stamp roach sat below them rud and these little perch. Double maggot. And I mean good stamp. One of them was probably sort of six, six ounce or so. So we can get it to the deck, bomb it through. Mm. Uh, that is a roach but it's a bit smaller so the roach are definitely below those perch and rud just drop it straight through there's a little bit of fizzing going on as well So just a little change of tactics on this line. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not panicking too much yet. Oh, that's um, you know, we've still got a couple of hours to go. I guess we're all right. It just seems if we can get that ma those double maggots to the bottom, there's obviously some better fish just below all those rod that we was catching. But with Bruce on one big carp, Brandon on two reasonable carp and Gail, probably all on double figures. Oh, what's that? So that's a better roach, there we go. So, nice stamp. I think we just keep putting fish in the net at the minute. Double red seems to be the best. Best bait. I'm just trying to force them down a little bit. I don't feed first, I just I drop the bait straight through the water column. Try and make minimum noise. And then feed. That was taken on the drop. But it's a roach again. It's like the roach have pushed out those rud. See, I'd rather do this any day than sit there watching a tip. Let's see, it's definitely on the bottom. I'm just looking, I'll probably re-top up the other lines in a second. There's no fizzing over that pace line. Not seen anything down the margin yet, which is to be expected. We'll feed a few, a few sixes down there. That's a better roach. Go on, I'll be brave and swing him. So that corn definitely singled out the better fish. Two hours to go, I'd say we are struggling. Not struggling for bites, still getting plenty of silvers. 
but every time I've looked on my bonus line, if you like, so two edges, pace line, nothing. So as we're coming towards the end of the match, well, still two hours to go, but I'll start thinking now about putting in a little bit more bait, being a bit more positive um, certainly over that pace line you know I'd have expected to have a bite or two it's cooled down a little bit now I've had a drop of rain again which is lovely these little perch are now they use an ornament um, but one slight benefit I think and this is why I'm going to feed positive down to my left as the wind has started, there's a bit of a breeze and it started to come down here. Not, not on this side, but you might be able to see on the camera. Um, there's a breeze developing, blowing that way. No other carp caught that I know of. So, at the minute, I think Brandon next door is still on too. Not so sure what else he's catching. Gail's on too. And Bruce down in the bottom corners on on one. Me and Chris is just on the other side of the island. Carpless. But um, again, I've found definitely found a few better roach on the deck here. Just by bomb it through, feed on top, get that bait down to the bottom. <laughs> and as I say that, I catch an absolutely tiny little perch. But there was definitely one or two better roach that I've had. But, um... I think a couple more carp will definitely be caught in the last hour and a half. So I can feel that breeze now, it's nice. That's on the drop. Rud. Um, so yeah, I think a couple more of these feed really positively on my margin lines. And have a little look. Just over an hour to go team. And it's now or never. I'm still no, I'm still carpless. The only good thing is that no more carp have been caught that I know of. Now I reckon I've probably got a good seven, eight pound of silvers, which is my target. And now really is the time that we need the car. An hour and 15 minutes to go. It's quarter past two. With that bit of a breeze blowing down here, it sort of pushed a load of scum into this corner, which for me looks ideal. So I fed aggressively on this pace line that I'm having a look at now. I've had a lot of hemp and corn tight in the margin on the shelf. Also just down here to my right, six milli pellets, hemp and corn. There's still a few silvers to be had short. Definitely, I said before about the roach on the bottom. Some good stamp roach. Three, four ounce. But um, not particularly quick. So I'm convinced that someone else will get another carp. A little, a little touch then. That's, that's, uh, that's a good sign. I'll come back with a bit of crap, but that's okay. Let's knock up some more ground bait. I've made it a lot heavier now. Some more F1 Supreme. Some micros in there.
but it's um, it's tricky for the carp. I, I, I picked this peg because I was convinced there'd be some down here. It's not turning out that way at all. Okay team, change of angle because the old uh, microphone battery's gone, so hopefully you can hear me okay. <laughs> Last 20 minutes. Normally, I would still concentrate down the edge, against the pads, fishing for carp, looking for that bonus fish in this last hour. But I just don't feel that they're there. I honestly don't feel that, you know, the odd little bite I've had on the paste didn't, didn't feel right. So, I'm just going to concentrate on this short line. i put some pellets in, and I've also um, re-plumbed my paste rig. So if any carp do move in here, because they can do, I mentioned before, autumn, winter, you do, you get carp come in on this two plus two line. But I'd have some fun trying to get it in, in this, uh, with this gear and these weeds. It's really slowed down, um, but I am still getting the odd roach. And they're a decent stamp. So I've chucked a method out into that ripple. I've spent quite a bit of time on paste. I had a look down that marginal shelf, nothing. Down the margin here to my right, I've just had a couple of perch. Um, that's no good. And it's all just a bit iffy. can't get these silver shallow again. Well, I'll have another look in a second. On the whip. Put some pellets in, some bigger baits. Just in case the carp rock up here. Because you never know. 17 minutes to go. I think it's the first time in a long while that I've not had a bonus fish. Normally, or even if it's just like a tooth, Two pound carp or something like that, or a chub. One match I had an hide and a chub to go with me bits and pieces. I managed to win with them. But I've got a decent net of silvers. I'm just hoping that nobody else has had another carp. And um, I don't know, I might have sort of seven, seven or eight pound. And, you know, I'm going to need double figures. Let's hope that them roach that I've had, the, the, you know, the good stampers that they weigh a little bit. I've had a nice perch. Sort of six or seven ounce. Might need a slightly slower fall at the bottom. But, you know, these, these are good roach. That's what that will swing it very, <laughs> very ambitious. I mean, lovely, lovely fish. They're the ones we've been getting. So, last 10 minutes. See you at the weigh-in. Six. No way! <laughs> there was a picture of that.